Khodam Ulamadiya Canada presents African Lion Safari, Canada's original safari adventure. You are entering an environment that is home to over 1,000 birds and animals, many of which are classified as endangered or threatened species. You will see these majestic creatures roaming freely in large game reserves. The African Lion Safari is situated in Cambridge, Ontario. It is only one hour west from Toronto, Ontario. African Lion Safari was founded and named by Colonel G. G. Jaley in the summer of 1969. The tour consists of eight kilometers of trail through seven game reserves. We are now entering the main gates. At this time, all drivers are asked to lock their doors, put up windows. By this, they mean to keep arms and legs in vehicles at all time. Welcome to the Safari Trail. We are beginning our tour at the Nairobi Sanctuary, where you can find Egyptian geese, llamas, white storks, rhea, known as South American ostriches, cranes, vultures, cheetahs, and lions. The Watusi cows are well known for their most distinguished features, their large white horns. They are medium-sized animals with long, large diameter horns. They attract attention wherever they appear. These regal animals can easily trace their ancestry back more than 6,000 years and have often been referred to as cattle of kings. Watusi should appear elegant, well-bred, and graceful. The llama is a pack animal that originally comes from South America and was first domesticated by ancient Inca civilization about 2,000 years ago. A group of llamas consists of a male with several females. Although the llama is capable of carrying up to 200 pounds on its back, the llamas are never ridden as they do not possess the proper temperament. If you tried to ride a llama, he would probably lie down and refuse to move. And if you were to be persistent in riding it, it would probably turn around and spit at you. Fossil footprints found in California indicate that llamas originated in North America. The original camelids started out in North America and the animals that moved north and crossed the Bering Land Bridge evolved into camels, while the ones that migrated to the south became the llama family. Most llamas now are native to western South America mostly Bolivia, Chile, and Peru. Llamas graze on grasses and browse on leaves, and with their long necks, anything on the other side of a fence is fair game. The rhea are frequently called the South American ostrich, although they are different from the ostrich in many ways. Beginning with, they are smaller in size, and it has three toes on each foot, while the ostrich has only two. Rhea have been hunted for many years for human consumption and as pet food and their feathers as dusters. Consequently, they are listed under the endangered species, but they do reproduce very well in captivity. The Rhea was arbitrarily named after Rhea, the wife of Cronus in Greek mythology. As previously mentioned, the Rhea is often called the South American ostrich, although it is not related to the ostrich. The genus name means wing shoulder, and the species name means having feathers. Fossilized rheas have been found in the upper Pleistocene of Argentina about two million years ago. They are golden brown tending toward gray, with white flecking throughout. We now have the East African crown cranes. They can be recognized by the arrangement of straw-like bristles across the top of their heads and they are known for their unique bobbing dance in which they use their entire body to perform. We are now entering Simba Lion Country. Dangerous animals. Do not feed the animals. Keep windows closed. Here at Simba Lion Country we will see lions and lion cubs. Of all the great cats, the lion has always held a supreme place in man's esteem and imagination. The lion has always been honored by man 
crediting the regal beast with attributes he prizes most nobility, courage, loyalty, and combative skills. The myth of the supernatural powers of the lion survives today. By consuming or wearing parts of a lion, it is believed that one can revive lost powers, cure illness, attain courage, and win immunity from death. Yet, for all its glory, the lion is only the second largest of the big cats, the tiger being the largest. Lions are very social creatures and most typically live in prides of 5 to 20 members. The pride here in the park has one male and a number of females and two cubs. A male lion can easily be recognized by his large mane which starts to grow when he is around 15 months old and is fully developed in five years. The lion cubs that you'll be seeing, they were born on November 20th of 2004. Lion cubs are born in litters of two to four after a three and a half month gestation period. They are blind at birth and will typically open their eyes when they are two or three days old and at birth they are no bigger than a kitten. They weigh only between one half and one kilogram. Some of the large cats that you see here were hand raised by our carnivore keepers. The staff does bottle feeding to the cubs every two hours for 24 hours a day. They will gain about 10 pounds per month and by the time they are three months old they are weaned off and then they're eating about two pounds of meat every day. We are actually quite lucky to have caught the cats awake. You see, lions are very lazy creatures, and they typically sleep between 15 and 20 hours every day. African Lion Safari is pleased to have had 10 cheetah born at the park since May 2001. These cheetah represent second and third generation captive breed cats. There is an estimated 9,000 to 12,000 cheetah in the wild. Once ranging throughout Africa, the Middle East, and India, they are now found in Eastern and Southern Africa with the largest population found in Namibia. The greatest threat facing the cheetah is loss of its habitat. It is African Lion Safari's hope that with the addition of these cheetah that its successful breeding program for this endangered species will continue to provide healthy species for future generations. We are now entering the Wanky Bushland Trail where you can find baboons. As you enter this section you'll notice that there is a road that goes to the left side. Now this is the Monkey Jungle Bypass Road. As you can see, we have taken the interactive route. The baboon has a very interesting social organization. Their social behavior begins at birth. Each member has their place in the structure. The leader is usually the strongest male. The baboons are very unexpected animals. You never know what they are up to. They are very entertaining and enjoy humans. They cover the tour buses and cars to amuse the clientele at the safari. As we get close to the main group, you'll notice there are quite a number of babies. The babies will cling on to their mother's underside for the first three months of life because it is the best position for them to nurse. They follow the cars, latch onto the vehicles, sit on the side mirrors, or any other safe haven as your car moves along. Little baby baboons are guarded by their families. Here, you are highly recommended not to lower your windows and just enjoy the view. The monkeys are very cute to observe, but you know what? They're also very naughty. They have been known to damage cars, 
by pulling off the side strips and other small parts of the vehicle. This monkey really didn't seem to mind getting up close to us. Schools and other clubs often visit the safari in larger groups. The reason being is that this helps in reducing the ticket fare per person. And just in case those monkeys get into the bus, at least you'll have a friend to take care of you. We are now approaching the exit to the Wanky Bushland Trail. Here at least one game warden is stationed there, just to make sure that none of the baboons get a ride out on the cars or buses passing through. Following the Simba Lion Country and the Wanky Bushland Trail, we are now entering the Rocky Ridge Veldt. Here you will find some interesting animals from Africa. The White Rhinoceros, the Baringo Giraffe, Grant's Zebra, Elands, Barbary Sheep, and Ostriches. Here are the Zebras. The Zebra is considered as the wild horse of Africa and is one of the most numerous and most preyed upon creature to inhabit the African continent. And unlike domestic horses, the Zebra is impossible to train. They have neither the horse's endurance nor the gentleness that makes a horse a friend to human. The subspecies of zebra we have here are the Grant's zebra. They can be easily recognized by their bold black stripes, which completely encircle their bodies and legs. They are especially conscious of their own. Each stripe pattern is unique to each animal, and there are many theories concerning the purpose of the zebra's stripes. The most popular is that they act like a reflection line to help cope with the heat. The black stripe absorbs the heat and the white stripe reflects the heat. The small sandy brown animals that we see here are the Barbary sheep and they inhabit the rocky desert mountains of North Africa. They'll live singly or in small groups and they're excellent sure-footed jumpers and climbers which are able to clear obstacles of two meters in height. The young who are born in the spring are able to jump about vigorously just hours after the birth. Since the early days, the flock here has thrived and they have managed to send hundreds of animals to sheep enthusiasts and farmers in Canada and the USA. Careful attention is paid to the breeding of the sheep here so that the widest range of natural colors is maintained. Today, at the African Lion Safari, the flock consists of about 200 sheep. All of the recognized 11 natural colors are represented. The ostrich is the largest living bird. They are not capable of flight, however, they do have very powerful legs which enable them to run at over speeds of up to 70 kilometers an hour, which can be maintained for half an hour without showing any signs of fatigue. During the mating season, the male will gather up to four females in his harem, and then they all lay their eggs in a communal nest. One ostrich egg weighs approximately 1.8 kilograms, which is the equivalent to 30 chicken eggs. The belief that ostriches bury their heads in the sand is false, but they do sometimes lie down with their heads and necks down to avoid being seen. The White Rhinos as you can see, these animals are not really white at all, but are a slate gray color. They derive their name from the African word rye, meaning wide or square-lipped. Their lower lips are quite flat in order to help them crop the grass as they are strictly vegetarian. The rhinos are usually active in the morning and in the evening, they'll enjoy a refreshing rollover in the mud during the heat of the day to cool themselves off. Rhinos are quite peaceful animals unless provoked 
and unfortunately the aggressive reputation they do have is quite undeserved. As you can see, rhinos have two short white horns, one behind the other. These can actually reach a length of about one meter. The horns are made of a protein called creatine, which is the same thing that makes up our hair and fingernails. Rhinoceros are some of the most endangered species in the world. There are five living species of rhinoceros. The black rhino and the white rhino are found in Africa, while the Indian, Sumatran, and Javan rhino are found in Asia. All rhinoceros live in tropical and subtropical regions, ranging from open savanna to dense forests or jungle. The five species range in size from 340 to 3,630 kilograms and stand anywhere from 1.4 to 1.8 meters tall. The two largest species, the white and the Indian, are the second largest land animals next to the elephant. African Lion Safari maintains a herd of four southern white rhino comprised of one male and three females. There are currently about 11,100 southern white rhino in the wild. The white rhino was almost wiped out in the late 1800s, but efforts of conservationists, governments, and landowners have allowed their numbers to rebound. About 10,000 of the surviving white rhino live in the country of South Africa. Here we have the tribe, or ring of giraffes. There are less than a hundred of these species in North America. Interestingly, each giraffe has their own unique set of spots, much like you and I have our own unique fingerprints. A fully grown giraffe will stand about 6 meters in height and weigh about 1,500 kilograms. And although half of their height is composed of neck alone, they have only the same number of vertebrae as a mouse or a human neck, which is seven. Both male and female giraffes have two short bumps on top of their heads. These are not horns or antlers, but are a part of the giraffe's skull. Giraffes are capable of going for over a month without drinking water because they get all the moisture they need from the leaves and buds that they eat. The eland are the largest of all antelope and their most distinctive features are their large horns which can reach a height of one meter. Sometimes you may notice thin white strips running along the sides of the eland. The theory is that from a distance these stripes look like the outline of the ribcage which makes the animals seem less appealing to predators. Elands are the largest antelopes of Africa, standing nearly two meters high at the shoulder and a fully grown male may weigh over 700 kilograms. Both sexes have heavy, spirally twisted horns of up to one meter in length. Elands form large herds, often in association with zebras or giraffes, possibly in the hope of warding off lions. Welcome to Eurasia. Here we will find animals from Europe, Japan, India, Asia, and Tibet. Here we see the Sika deer, scattered along the trees. The Sika deer can be spotted by their white spotted coat and their most distinctive feature is their patch of white hair which conceal their short tail. Sika deer are native to Japan where they are actually considered sacred. And those two light brown shaggy animals that you see are the Himalayan tar. The Himalayan tar are related to both sheep and goats. They have long trucks of hair on their elbows and their jaw. In the wild, they will typically live in herds of about 30 or 40, although our herd at the park is much, much smaller. Coming up, we have our Nilgai. The Nilgai comes from India and they are the largest of the Indian antelopes. Both sexes have a white ring above each hoof and two white spots on each cheek. 
Their bodies are rather oddly proportioned in that their shoulders are actually taller than their rump. You'll notice the darker colored one up there. That's the male. The females are charcoal gray, but look blue in the sunlight and are sometimes called the blue bull. This is actually where the name comes from. Neil meaning blue and guy meaning cow. The black animals we see now are a type of ox called the yak, which are native to Tibet. The yak's coat is thick and shaggy, which protects it from snowstorms and enables it to live in temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. The yak gives birth to one calf usually every second year because the young are dependent on their mothers for the first entire year. In times of danger, the yak will form a circle around their young with their horns facing outwards. The Sicilian donkey was domesticated by the ancient Egyptians around 300 BC. It is more sure-footed than the horse, which makes it better for traveling on mountain trails. It is also smaller than the horse, standing only 1.4 meters at the shoulder. And although they are often regarded as stubborn and foolish, the donkey is actually quite intelligent and an enduring animal. The Marhor are the largest members of the wild goat family. Both males and females have long spiraling horns. The male's horns tend to be about twice as long as the female's. The Marhor are kept in a pen at all times because they are excellent jumpers and would have no problem clearing any of the fences here at the African Lion Safari. We are now entering the Americas. Here we have the wild turkey. Now these wild turkeys are related to the domestic farm turkey. And contrary to popular belief, the turkeys are capable of flight and are strong flyers, but can only typically be airborne for about a quarter of a mile. Next, we have the fallow deer. These small spotted deer are native to European Great Britain. There are a large number of fallow in this reserve because they do produce very easily in captivity and many fallow deer are born here every year. And only the male fallow deer grow antlers. They begin to grow in the second year of life. Here we have the elk. They are the second largest member of the deer family in North America. The largest of course being the moose. The male outgrow the female in antlers. If you look closely at their antlers, they look a bit fuzzy. Well, that's because they are growing, and during their growth period, they are covered with a soft, velvety material that supplies them with a rich supply of blood and nutrients. There are a couple of baby elk here if you look closely. Once the antlers are fully grown, the soft skin will be shed. Next we have the North American bison. They are now only found in protected areas and there are only about 30,000 left. Here there are quite a number of bison calves. They are born with a rusty color but as they grow it becomes darker and they will begin to grow shaggy horns as their parents possess. At birth they weigh about 50 to 20 kilograms. This is a far cry from what they will weigh in maturity. A fully grown male can tip the scales of about 1,300 kilograms. You'll notice that the bison are looking a bit patched and ragged. Well, this is because they are shedding their winter coats. During this time, you often see them rolling in the dirt. The rubbing action helps them to get rid of some of the old fur and protects their skin from insects.
we will now dive into the waters for an elephant swim which will be narrated by an expert from the African Lion Safari. Uh, well, each of these elephants is from the barn here. Um, anyone, some of the elephants weren't born here at the safari, the two young ones that you can see, they were. They're uh, five and four. Their names are Johnson and George. Um, a couple of the other ones were actually born in the wild, so not all of our elephants were born in captivity. The oldest one we have out here is 31, and the 31 years, yeah, and then the youngest would be four. We are now back where we started. We hope that you enjoyed this trip of ours at the African Lion Safari, located in Cambridge, Ontario. Jazakallah for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.